Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Nightrun Studio, and in our last two videos we added a Teleport and Spark AoE spell, and they're working pretty decently, except that we're running into a little trouble. That is, our magic script is getting pretty large and we've only got two spells so far, so we're going to take a break to do some optimization here. We're going to take all of our spell data as well as our logic for casting and move it into some scriptable objects so that we can store this a lot better and it's also going to make life way easier for adding new spells to our game and adding things like chests and switching spells. Alright, that's a mouthful for an intro so let's just dive right into this thing. Let's get started. Now the very first thing we're going to do is get scripting. So let's head into our player scripts and we're going to create a new folder here and we're just going to call this one spells. Once inside there, let's create a new script, which we can call spell SO for scriptable object. Now, if you haven't worked with them before, scriptable objects are essentially data containers that let you store information separately from game objects and scenes. They're especially useful for keeping your data organized and reusable, which will work especially well in our case where we could have a bunch of spells down the road. So here's what that looks like. First of all, we'll get rid of our start and update method. And then rather than inheriting from mono behavior, we're going to put scriptable object in here. Now this spell SO is going to contain data that's going to be true for every spell we have. So let's make a header here called general. And we'll have a public string for spell name, a float for the cooldown length. And then let's also put a sprite in here, which we can call icon as we'll be implementing that a little later in the series. Now the other thing this is going to need is a public abstract void method and this is going to be called cast, and it's going to take in a reference to our player script, which we'll just call player. This is a sort of interface. Think of it as a contract between all of our spells. They will all have to implement this cast method, but this gives each spell the ability to have its own particular logic, while our magic script is just going to have to call cast every time. Now, in order to make that abstract void method work, we just need to make sure that this script itself is also abstract. All right, and now we're ready to create our first actual spell SO. So let's head back into Unity where we can create another script. And this time around, we'll call it teleport spell SO. We can open that up. Okay, so let's get rid of our start and update method again. And this time we're going to inherit from spell SO, which means we will get all of the logic that we put in there. Of course, this won't be happy, and that's because we haven't yet implemented the interface for casting. So let's add a public override void cast method that takes in a player reference called player. All right, now things are happy. Next, let's create an asset menu. Here our menu name is just gonna be spells slash teleport spell. Now what that's gonna do is make it so that back in Unity we can create, and now we'll have a spells option here where we can create a teleport spell. I might just call this one teleport level one. We can give it a name like teleport level one, a cooldown, and for now we'll just leave the icon empty. So now then, let's set up some of those values. We're gonna make a header called teleport settings. And in here, we'll have all of the things from our magic script, like a public float for range. Let's start off with five. Another public float, this time for our player's radius. Remember, this is the amount of space the player takes up so that we don't teleport inside walls and things. I'm gonna go with 1.5 for now. We'll also have a public layer mask, which is gonna define what counts as an obstacle, i.e. the things we don't wanna teleport into. Now, if we were to head into magic right now, we can actually go to our teleport and we're gonna grab almost all of the logic in here. We'll just leave the can cast and the next casting time lines out. Let's go ahead and cut those. We can then just paste those right into the cast method in our spell SO. And here you'll notice though, the one error is just we changed spell range to the simpler range. So let's just fix that. We can then go ahead and save this. Back in Unity now, we've already got range and radius values, but let's go ahead and select obstacle. I don't want to teleport into the ground or into any enemies. Now at this point, we can also just duplicate this in order to quickly make multi-tiered spells. So for example, a teleport level two, which has a slightly longer cooldown, but allows me to teleport further. All right, we want to be able to test this, but first we're going to just have to pop quickly into our magic spell and fix a couple things. All right, so inside of magic, let's do some cleanup. We can get rid of those teleport variables altogether, and this is already starting to look like a much cleaner script. And now we're going to add a new line here called public spell SO, and it's going to be current spell. This is going to be how we keep track of what spell we're currently casting. So now in cast spell, rather than select one of these spells, we're going to grab our logic that was left in teleport, delete teleport, and now we're just going to do a couple of things here. First of all, we're going to make it so that if we are not yet able to cast, or 
If our current spell is null, then we'll return, meaning we can't cast a spell so we don't want any more logic here. However, if we do have a spell and our cooldown is finished, then we want to tell our current spell to cast itself and pass along a reference to our player. Here then we just need to make sure that rather than using spell cooldown, which doesn't exist anymore, we're going to use the new cooldown that we've put inside of each of our spells, so we can just do current spell dot cooldown. Before we go, let's just head down to the bottom, and this line is actually not even going to be used anymore. Let's just comment it out for the moment so we don't get an error message in Unity. Alright, so now when we get into our game, we can go ahead and hit play. Let's open up our player and look at our sprite, and now under current spell we could select teleport, try it out, and sure enough we're teleporting. We can then change to the level 2, and you'll notice now that when I teleport we actually get that higher range. Alright, we're already creating tiered magic spells. Let's see what we can do with Spark next. First thing is going to be to create the spell, so let's create a new script which we'll call Spark Spell SO, and we can go ahead and open that up. Alright, once again we'll get rid of the start and update method, make sure that this inherits from our Spell SO, and then implement our interface. We'll do a public override void cast method that takes in a player reference. Okay, next let's create our asset menu. This time our menu name is once again going to have spells in it, but then we'll just do Spark Spell after that. Now we can add the variables that are particular to this spell. So let's have a heading for our spark settings. Let's have a public integer which can define how much damage we're going to deal. We can start with say 3. A public float for the radius or the damage range. Next we'll have a public game object which is going to hold the spark effects prefab we created in the spark video. And then finally we need to define a layer mask which is going to be what counts as an enemy. Now if we head over to magic, we can go into our spark method and again grab all the logic except for the can cast and next cast time, which we can just delete all of that as we don't need it anymore. Look how clean that magic script is looking. Alright, back in our spark spell now, we can just paste in all of that logic and it pretty much goes in as is. We just need to make sure to change that damage radius to just plain old radius since we shortened it. Now let's make sure we're staying organized, so we'll create a new folder here for our spell SOs, and we can drag those two teleport spells in there. Inside then, we can create a new spell, and this time, let's do a spark spell. I'm going to call this one spark level 1. We can then head on over and keep its name, spark level 1. Let's give it a cooldown, and again we'll leave the icon empty for now. Damage and radius are already set, but we're going to need to put our spark effects in there, so I'll just search that up here, and then drag it on over. Finally, we need to define our enemy, and I'm just going to use the enemy layer for this one. While we're here, let's make a second tier spark spell by making a level 2. We'll maybe give this one a little more damage and also a fair bit more radius. I'll also make sure to rename it spark level 2. Now for testing purposes, let's shift click all three dummies, and I'm just going to give them each 100 health and max health so that we can hit them a bunch of times here in testing. And then just going to duplicate and add a couple more on the edges so we can really see how our range is working. In the game now, I can go to my player sprite, make sure to add the spark spell, and let's do level 1 first. We'll cast it and things are working pretty decent. I can really get a feel for the range of it if I move around here. Now we can go to current spell and add the level 2 version, and now when I cast, you can see that it's hitting everything anywhere nearby. I'm just going to head over here and make sure that it works across the gap as well, and sure enough, yep, things are casting pretty well. Alright, we've come a long way in this video and cleaned things up a whole lot, and hopefully you can see how this spell SO is going to really nicely set the table for a lot more spells, but also for making it easy to switch spells and also upgrade and collect them from chests and things like that. In our next video, we're going to add a final spell, at least for now, which will be a healing spell, and then after that we'll get into those spell switching and collecting. Hope to see you in those videos. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.